the nation is dependent on the citrus fruits grown in California. During drought periods, this is a difficult task for growers because citrus trees require some water all year long. With a five-year drought in California, many citrus growers took drastic measures to ensure their orchards remain viable and profitable. My name is Lisa Brennis, and uh, together with my husband, Jim Churchill, we own and operate this Churchill Brennis Orchard in the Ojai Valley of California. We have 17 acres. We grow Ojai Pixie Tangerines, Seedless Kishu Mandarins, uh, and we have a little avocado play. Nature can be capricious. Some people call it cruel. I just call it honest. But to have nature as your partner is uh, a privilege. Between 2011 and 2016, the Ojai Valley suffered a major drought and continued to suffer from those conditions afterward. Like many growers in the region, Lisa and her husband work hard to keep their orchard viable with little to no water. Irrigation is really the only job that we have to do, and we have to get it as right as we can. Citrus is not resilient to drought conditions. As farmers, we have to be resilient for them. And so our resiliency has included reducing the size of the trees by 50% to make a smaller, denser tree that's going to still produce using less water. Um, we've taken out trees, sadly. We've retired trees that, although we love them, they're not making money for us. So, and that's always, that's kind of sad. Reducing our acreage uh, and vigilance have allowed us to continue and to produce crops uh, at a higher cost costing more money to produce less fruit, but we're still here. The only water source for the orchard is the dwindling Casedens Reservoir. Built after a major drought in the 50s, the lake provides a 20-year water supply to numerous growers and residents of the region. What we've learned is that there's, a, is that there's always things that you can do to use the water that you have more effectively. Ben Faber, a farm advisor with the University of California Cooperative Extension, helped Lisa and her husband find ways to maximize the minimal water available. In a crisis period like this, growers have to figure out how to farm better. In this case, they've switched over their irrigation emitters. Um, they used to use fan jets, I think, here, and they've put in a lot of inline drip irrigation. And in that case, inline drip is just putting water exactly on the ground. It's not putting it in the air where... In this case, I, I think fan jets are an excellent tool, but this is a really windy area, and um, it doesn't work very well in a highly windy area. Uh, so it, you learn to use the proper tool in the proper environment. So this is a dual-line inline drip emitter system. So initially, they can be... Um, laid out so that just this young tree is getting a, the water from that emitter and as time goes by it'll be coming out at different points. Lisa also uses an app monitor to measure the soil moisture. Many growers use soil sensors, but because the orchard is on rocky ground, the app monitor is a more reliable method. Drought is uh, always going to be an issue in irrigated environments like California. And the number one question I get from growers, as well as the general public, is how do I irrigate? Every system is different, every orchard is different, every environment is different, and you've got to learn how to farm and irrigate each of those situations according to their needs. But the most important thing that keeps farming going in California is water, and if it's not used appropriately, you're not gonna be in farming for very long. You know, you, you really can't produce very well in, in Southern California, or for that matter, for most of irrigated agriculture in California, unless you manage that water. For more information, go to this University of California Drought Tips webpage.